As uh, Dr. Yuli said, uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Glidian, where we are looking to solve the pain point around prior authorizations. Um, most, I, I assume most of you know what prior authorizations are, but for those who don't, it's essentially an approval that you would get from insurance companies before you could prescribe a high cost procedure or medication and expect to be reimbursed for it. So across the United States, roughly $31 billion is spent in administrative overhead in just obtaining prior authorizations. This, is, this amounts to about $55,000 per physician. This is just the administrative overhead. When we take a look at the revenue that's lost in healthcare systems, so about one third of the revenue that a hospital writes off is due to authorization related issues of where they performed a procedure that they didn't know required an authorization or that the authorization was denied um, or they just didn't reschedule the procedure as they sh well, they end up rescheduling sometimes as well, which is another cost to them. On the left hand side, you could see actually here what the cost of transactions are in healthcare. The one that should really stand out to you are prior authorizations. Uh, you can see it's the most costly transaction in healthcare today. The reason is that it looks something like this today, of where you would go and see your physician, he or she would prescribe a high cost medication or procedure, then their back office staff would go determine if an authorization is required. They'll end up either calling the health plan, or if it's available, they'll go on to the, to the, to the payer's website, they'll usually print the form, handwrite it, and then fax it out to the health plan. They'll wait up to five business days to hear from the health plan. Some providers have told me it feels like submitting into a black hole because they have no idea what's going on with the payer. And if you made any mistakes, so if you misspelled the patient's name, you're off by a digit in the member's ID, they'll come back and tell you that you need to restart this process again. On, on average, this is taking about 20 hours of medical staff time per week per physician. So what we are looking to do at Glidian is build a platform for submitting all your prior authorizations. The idea is that you would be able to get onto our web portal, tell us which insurance company you're looking to get an authorization from, and what procedure or medication you're looking to get an authorization for. We would go and retrieve the forms that are specific to the plan, as well as to the procedure or medication. From there, as you're filling out this form electronically, we can give you feedback about information you might be missing warning you that perhaps this is going to get denied because it doesn't meet the plan's criteria. So you're not wasting your time submitting authorizations that would never be approved in the first place. Then after you've submitted, we offer electronic tracking of the authorization. So you can forget about the idea of submitting into a black hole. Through our platform, we've actually had clinics that have been using it in the Bay Area. One clinic told us they used to spend 45 minutes per authorization. They're down to about five minutes at, right now. So what we're looking to do over time in terms of what our vision is here, once you've had enough authorizations go through our system, we can begin to develop an intelligent rules engine so that before you even submit the authorization, we can give you a likelihood of approval or denial. Maybe there's a, there's a path of least resistance that the insurance company would want you to go down that, be, that they would be much more likely to approve you for. That'd be where we would see incentives align from both payers and providers. So here's the team behind Glidian. Uh, my co-founder Robert and I met almost 10 years ago at Johns Hopkins. We were biomedical engineers. We worked at, in health IT and medical devices. Our third co-founder, uh, they actually, my two other co-founders met each other at Stanford. They have a background in machine learning and artificial intelligence, where we'd like to take that expertise and lay it on top of all the data that goes through our system. And that's where the intelligent rules engine would be developed. So, yeah. so the question was whether we're focusing on a subset of pre-authorizations. Uh, with these clinics that we first started, we started with medication authorizations. Uh, we were actually a little bit lucky in that California has a state mandated form for medication authorizations. So that's what we started with. Uh, now we're looking to branch out into other types, but I'd say that's what we, that, that's a subset. Mm hmm Yep. Sure. So when we take a look at the Medicaid, oh, sorry. Yeah. So the question was, uh, how does it fit into the reimbursement cycle? How, do, how does private authorization fit into the reimbursement cycle? So when we take a look at medication authorizations, the idea is that what ends up happening today is the patient will get prescribed the medication. They'll end up at their pharmacy, and their pharmacy will tell them that either they have to pay out of pocket 
or they need to get the authorization. So what ends up happening is it gets kicked back to the healthcare provider who gets the authorization, and then it'll actually be covered by the insurance plan. So. Yep. So the question was, what, is our, what does the business model look like? How do we actually get money from this tool? So for medication authorizations, we're actually partnering with pharmaceutical companies who would pay us on a per authorization basis. Uh, when we take a look at the procedure authorizations, that's where we would look to charge hospitals as a, there's a direct financial impact on them if they don't get that approval. I'd say, so what we've been, the reason we built out California and Texas is we started in California, the clinics, we have some hospital systems we'll be working with in Texas. So it's really not difficult from our end to add in different states. We're just going by where we've been getting traction. Uh, so the question was, uh, why go after providers as opposed to going after health plans? And then the second question was, uh, what the readiness of the product is. Uh, so with regards to going after providers versus health plans, when we took a look at what is the administrative overhead from both sides, it's roughly three times greater for healthcare providers uh, in terms of submitting authorizations. Um, health plans, I think, are moving towards that automation, but it, we've just seen a much stronger resonance from providers than we have with health plans. Um, and then the readiness of the platform, uh, we've built out a pretty robust system of being able to submit to virtually any health plan. Uh, the work we're working on right now is building the, the response that comes back from insurance. How can we really bucket that and fully automate that piece? Yes. Yep, and that, that's exactly, so the question is how do health plans respond to this type of solution? Uh, health plans actually, they do have an administrative cost on their side as well. When they receive a fax that comes in that's handwritten, somebody actually has to transcribe all that information into their system. And then a human has to manually review all this information. So if we begin to do a full electronic uh, transaction with them, it does help their cause as well in, redu in reducing their overhead.